January 2009 Care for cows in Vrindavan If you wish upon a cow Saranagati resounds in Vrindavan Dodgy born to push a more graduates Care for cows in Vrindavan CFC trustees Vraja Mohan Dasa Hayavalabha Dasa Amit Dhulani Rakesh Rahira Patrons Radha Jivan Dasa Suresh Vajiani CFC Staff Kermarupa Dasa Dr. J.P. Lavanya Kesi Nisadana Dasa Braja Gopal Dasa, Switzerland, Lakshmi Rupa Dasi, Denmark, Jagannath Dasa Isani Devi Dasi, Holland, Siam Harry, Vijay, Ramu, Santosh, Mithun, Sukumar Editor Kermarupa Dasa Care for Cows in Vrindavana is inspired by AC. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Founder Acharya International Society for Krishna Consciousness This is a statement from the famous Hadith collection Tsad al Mayad by I.B. N. Kayim. I have been all through the many Hadith books and I have never found any saying that the Prophet of Islam, peace be upon him, ate beef. In fact, he advised against it. If Muslims would leave off eating beef on the advice of their own Prophet it could really help to ease the tensions between Hindus and Muslims. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, you should use cow's milk and ghee as it is good for health, but beef is bad for health. Urdu Commentary by Hafiz Nazr Ahmed, in the Book of Medicine of the Mustadrak the first hadith is, the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings upon him, said, Allah did not create any disease without creating its cure, and in cow's milk there is a cure for every disease. Cow's milk is superior. It is free from everything harmful and provides healing for various illnesses. Physicians prescribe butter and ghee as medicine. Jayasri Guru Jayasri Gopala Jayasri Gomata CAReferCows.org Care for Cows in Vrindavan is a charitable trust registered in India, USA, Holland, and Switzerland. If you wish upon a cow by Braja Savaki Dasi attention all skeptics, doubting Thomases, pessimists, and those who don't believe in the Easter Bunny anymore, well, okay, the Easter Bunny is a total myth, but, it's that magical time of year when children wish for things and sometimes they come true, when grown UPS make resolutions that never come true, and when people like me, stuck somewhere between child and grown up, write stories about mystical things that are 1000% true. I'm sure by now all of you have met or heard of Pushpa. In case you haven't, she's the famous chocolate colored calf who came into care for cows around three years ago this month, broken and crippled and without much will to live, and neither would you if you'd been hit by a car and left on the side of the road for a week. Fortunately a cow-friendly chap named Kate Anya Simha Dasa from Dubai stopped his car on his way to the Daji temple and picked up that little chocolate calf a tiny wee girl of only three or four months old put her in his back seat, and drove her back to town, where he knew someone who'd lived in Vrindavan for a long time and had a cow sheet that looked after broken little cows and bulls. He drove around until he found it, and deposited Pushpa into the loving hands of the Care for Cows clinic. It was a day or two later I came in the gate and saw little Pushpa lying there. They told me that she wouldn't survive, that she had no will to live, besides her broken leg and displaced hip, she had been torn up a little on her side, and no one was sure if she was internally injured. It turned out she wasn't, but she had a long, long way to go before she recovered. Her tiny little calf spirit had been broken. Pushpa you on arrival Pushpa was barely alive I sat down in the dirt that first day and stroked her head and ears for a long time. I cried at the thought that no one had stopped to help her. I still cannot believe it, and it doesn't bear thinking about. Lovely chap who had reached her, adopted her officially. I cried and prayed and sang to her, and returned over the course of the next week or so and offered more of the same. I reluctantly had to leave Brian Davan to return home but I couldn't get that little calf out of my mind. I'd fallen in love with her. I harassed my husband daily, and eventually he caved in and within a couple of weeks we returned to Vrindavan. He immediately fell in love with Pushpa, and we, along with the, the scriptures say that these Vrindavan cows are special, and that they never forget even the slightest act of kindness towards them, which they reward a thousand times over. Of course, None of us could really care less about rewards from Pushpa, we just loved her and wanted her well, she was, to all of us, 
our little chocolate girl, and her suffering was a painful thing to watch. But a strange thing happened last month that reminded me of how much reciprocation these cows give in the most unusual ways. Pushpa recuperating Pushpa with Kate Anya Simha One day I was wishing I could do more for Pushpa and her friends, I would sometimes wish I had so much so I could give it to her and the other cows and bulls, how I'd love to sponsor the people who look after her, to make their lives easier, to give them freedom from stress about where their livelihood will come from, how they'll pay the bills, who will feed their children, and so on. It's a slightly conceited thought, of course, there are many generous folk who give to CFC and they're looked after very well down at the cowshed. But still, my little girl lived there and I was inclined to think about her and those who cared for her. I have a photo of Pushpa's hoof in a silver frame near my computer, and as I for the first time in months that afternoon, telling me he wanted to start a Facebook group for CFC. The next day, KR wrote and told me that Pushpa had just given birth to a little bull. I was overjoyed, though a little miffed at the thought that no one knew who the father was, what was going on down there, was looking at it one morning in December and having these thoughts. In a totally unrelated incident, Kermarupa, KR, contacted me I decided to write a short piece about it on my blog, http colon slash slash list and found in India dot I had started the blog only a few weeks earlier as a way to exercise my writing muscle. I wanted to write a book and get it published, so it was my way of disciplining myself, making sure I wrote an entry daily was a good way to go about it. Pushpa with her newborn calf that day, I gave a brief history of Pushpa and added some photos of her and her new bull baby. In a totally unrelated incident, I received more visitors and comments on my blog that day than ever before. The next day I added an update and a photo gallery, plus a link to the CFC page, and encouraged everyone to go and have a look at the cow sheet operation and to donate, it was Christmas after all, go and make a cow happy, I wrote. And they did. In a totally unrelated incident, the best literary agents in India signed me on that very afternoon. The next day, I awoke thinking nothing could be better than the last couple of days, only to find that it was, more comments than ever, and more hits on the site than ever. Pushpa had stolen their hearts, people were writing in promising never to eat cow again, some were sending donations, some were telling me they were sitting in front of the computer crying at her story. 500 people read her story that day. In a totally unrelated incident, a publisher from the UK wrote and told me he wanted to buy the rights to my book. The comments were amazing, none of these people were vegetarians that I knew of, bar three of them but Pushpa still touched their hearts. All of the Pushpa in contemplation comments were positive, everyone touched a little by her beautiful story, or the sweet innocence they saw in the photo of her little baby bull. Only one comment marred the occasion, a girl who insisted that her love for cows, she worked in agriculture, and eating them was not a contrary viewpoint. I told her it was insensitive to say those things on a site where cow protection was being discussed. She said that I was welcome to my opinion. I knew she had a dog, and so I wrote in response to her comment, if someone came after your dog, pinned it to the ground, slit its throat, cut it to pieces, cooked it up, and ate it, I'm sure you'd have more than just an opinion on that. In a totally unrelated incident, that girl's dog died that night. Moral of the story, 1. Don't mess with cows, it's really bad karma. Their suffering is not a joking matter. 2. A Brian Dave Van Cow remembers even a kind glance, what to speak of a kind word or gesture. The blessings they can bestow are not imaginary. They steal your heart and change your life, if you let them. Dodgy in contemplation Pushpa and Braja Savaki Saranagati in Brian Dave Van it was one of those hazy winter mornings when the sun hadn't quite decided to shine or not when a group of residents and friends of the Saranagati community in British Columbia arrived to chant Bajanas. They were headed by Dina Tareen Devi and Yamuna Devi. Yes. The one whose wonderful voice is heard singing Govindam left to right, Kanai Priya Dasa, Kart Amasa Dasa, Radha Kunt. Dina Tareen Devi, 
Kanipriya's Dina Tarin Devi Saranagati resounds Vrindavan prayers each morning in temples around the world. What a treat! To welcome them we spread some duris in front of Krishna Samadhi so they could set up the harmonium, Mridanga, Karatalas, and Tampara and chant the songs of Bhaktivinoda Thakura Saranagati songs focused on the process of surrender to the Supreme Lord. As Kart Amasa focused his Priya's daughter and wife Yamuna Devi, Nadia, Amala Purana, Hari Bhakti, Nilesh Vadwana Yamuna Devi concentration, Radha Kunda handed out songbooks and we all read aloud the English translations of the verses about to be sung. The ether became filled with the Thakuras pleased to be granted the privilege of unalloyed devotional service as the curious noses of cows and antelopes investigated the assembly. Villagers gathered at the gate to listen and appreciate and a man came forward requesting that we take his cow who he could no longer afford to keep. He reluctantly parted with her and she was appropriately named Saranagati. It was a gathering to remember and we pray that the residents of Saranagati bestow upon us the determination to live simply and focus our energy on surrender. Van Krishna's first harmonium lesson Ken Hypriya's daughter and Lakshmi Saranagati sponsored by Nilesh Vadwana Siamalaya joined us in August 2008 when he was only 18 months old. He is high strung, very strong, but because he trusts people, he is quite cooperative. He resisted the training for a few days as he did not understand what he was supposed to do, but the patience of the trainers paid off and within two weeks Yamalaya was ready for a dry run. He pulled the empty school bus to and from the school with one of our veteran bulls and within a few days became reliable enough to work steadily. Naitai was born to Sudibai in January 2003 and was a very beautiful calf, see below. He has always been shy, reserved and well behaved. He is tall and slender but getting strong as he progresses in training. Presently he is drilling with the small cart and will not pull the school bus until he is stronger. More graduates Muddy joined us in January 2007 after being rescued from a farmer who had beat him for grazing in his field. His rear leg was damaged and he was unable to walk properly for a few weeks. We moved him to Belvin but he broke the fence and found his way back to Sundrak by the next morning. He is stout, determined, and intelligent. Balaji was a frail orphan who joined us in August 2004 when he was about six months old. He was morose for several months but is mild-mannered, submissive, and very dutiful. He is one of the favorites of the trainers as he learns quickly and is obedient. Since he is slight in stature he will do odd jobs pulling the smaller cart and be used as a backup bus driver when he is stronger. Alan Nicole of Amit Jagtiani Amy Bardsley Amy Windsor Ananda Dasa Andretta Margarita Animal Life and Kennedy Anne Marie Felon Anshul Porwal Arika Vedasyan Arlene Sherbo BB. Govinda Swami Bader U.R.S. Bickle Stefan Braunaman Benedict Bood Hymanta Dasa Chandra Mukha Dasi David Thornton Devala Dasa Dhruva Maharaja Dasa Diza Lilo Dominic Bletz Elizabeth Stewart Esther Mann Family Fida Wild Free Carl Garuda GmbH Kauranga Priya Dasi Hattern Kurt Hart Egger Dora and Eugene Human and Fariba Hewiler August Jacqueline Fortner Jagannath Rao Yonka Heiko James Moore Janet Urbansik Janie Leary Jatin Bondari Jayaradhi and Tamal Patra Joseph Skurur Kapoor Family Karuna Purna Dasi Keshvara. Priya D.D. Kitri and Rita Kraur Hug Family Lavangala Tika Dasi Lakshmi Rupa Dasi Lee Foreman Lenhair Martina Lisa Kubis Lokanath Dasa Lucy Wyatt Madhava Dasa Mana McDowell Manish Agrawal Meister Manfred Melissa Harris Nilesh Vadwana Make How Stay in Front of Me, Make How Stay Behind Me, Make How Stay on Both Sides of Me. May I Always Reside in the Midst of Cows. Harry Bakhtavila 16.252 The cows send their heartfelt thanks to those who assisted during December 2008 Thank you from the cows Alexandra Avadizian PC Marcus Pradip Fogla Pragati Vaid Priya Krishnan Radha Mohan Savakarad Hajivan Dasarama Pyari Bandari Rame Subramani Ganesan Rohini Sudha Dasarudan Christian Samath Kanta Dasi Sanjata Ia Shalar Doris Schreier Flora Srinivas and Radha Damodara Strulikarp Adelheide Sujatha Vishnoi Siyama Dasi Siyama Avalaba Dasa T K. Chaudhry Vavilari Gianfranco Varun Janeja Vladimir Ivanov Brian Devan Khandra Vyasapada Dasa Weiss Irina Vunderli Karlia Janavika Dasa Yulia Cherniva.